There are 2,640 billionaires on this planet. My career as a tech entrepreneur and YouTuber has allowed me to work or meet with 25 of them. Some have interviewed right here on this channel. That means I've met 1% of all of the billionaires on this planet. And each of these billionaires has given me a full view into the raw wisdom, habits, insights, mindsets, tactics, and more. And these are not just tech billionaires. These are people making billionaires in hair care, tequila, shipping, energy, and printing presses. I'm going to be revealing the six greatest lessons I've learned from interviewing these billionaires that have helped me grow my company, AppSumo.com, to $100 million a year in revenue and can help you do the same. Stay tuned, though, for the fifth lesson, because I believe that one's going to surprise you. First lesson I learned from these billionaires is that there are zero employee billionaires. If you take only one thing away from this video, learn this. You must be your own boss if you want to become a billionaire. You cannot W-2 your way to billions. Now let's take Michael Hudner, the 76-year-old shipping magnet, describe this perfectly in our interview. The father of a girl I know, and he left the corporate world because he'd figured out how to buy a distressed piece of real estate with somebody else, and they were off and running, which is an important thing to be able to do, to get away from W-2 income. I mean, if you've got people who are trying to figure out how to do this, you got to keep your expenses down. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Hudner. What a, an amazing human. So there, there's really interesting things that he was talking about. So the first one that I think is so important is you're keeping your expenses down, or as I like to call it, that LCL, that low cost lifestyle. Just sharing my own, I was fortunate to have parents that I could live with. So I lived with my mom for two years after college. I lived in my aunt's basement for a year. Shout out Aunt Rhonda. And then I lived on floors, literally on floors for a year. Also driving Honda CRXs. The power of a low cost lifestyle is that it gives you less pressure, more freedom to do the thing you want so that you can hit your freedom number or the amount of money you need to make so that you can live the life you wanna live. And that will also help you create a lot more money because you're doing it the way you want. And the last thing he said, you have to get away from the W-2 income. And what he is saying there is that when you're an employee, there is a cap of your salary. Your paycheck as a W-2 worker, as an employee, will never be a billion dollars. It likely won't ever be greater than a couple million dollars. And those are rare cases. My highest paycheck as an employee was a hundred thousand bucks. I was at mint.com. I would have to get that paycheck consistently every month for the next 834 years just to make a billion. All right. No, thank you. That's going to take forever. Only in the last five years has the entrepreneur stepped into the spotlight of a pop culture icon. Think about that. Entrepreneurs and athletes are now neck and neck as the sexy new occupation. I'm too short to dunk. Come on, y'all. Netflix is filled with documentaries, YouTube, movies, and series about CEOs as heroes. The Social Network, Mark Zuckerberg. What I used to work for. The founder, Ray Kroc of McDonald's. We crashed. Adam Newman of WeWork. Wolf of Wall Street. Jordan Belfort, who I've had on the show. And at the end of each of these movies and shows, the main protagonists are their own boss. None of them are W-2 workers. Entrepreneurship is a pursuit of freedom that can only be fully embraced once you leave behind the W-2 world. I just got to say that I don't think W-2 thing is an evil thing. What I'm trying to say is if you want to be a billionaire, you give out the W-2s, you don't receive it. The only exception to this that I know of is Ryan Graves, who was the number two employee, former executive at Uber, who went on to become a billionaire from being an employee. Now, the growth, though, of Uber becoming a $100 billion company is unprecedented at the time, and his unique positioning within the company and sharp skill set no doubt allowed him to reach 10 figures as an employee. If anyone give Ryan Graves a shout, got a lot of love for him, I would love to hear him on this channel, but that is the exception, not the norm. So you must be your own boss. There are no employee billionaires. Get out of W2 work. Number two lesson I learned, billionaires create their market. Whoever creates the market takes on the billions. Mark Zuckerberg created the social networking market, billionaire. Travis Kalanick created the ride sharing market, billionaire. Sam Altman creating the AI consumer market, billionaire. However, the thing about creating a billion dollar market is it's usually never obvious. You seem crazy at first. Zuck, he chased social networking back with Facebook in college in 2004. That's 20 years ago. Paul Ophelia, he chased consumer printing, you know, copy machines. We don't even know about these anymore. At Kinko's in the 1970s, when printing was mainly a commercial industry. John Paul DeJoria started Patron Tequila when there was zero top shelf tequila brands and no one bought it for nearly two years when he launched it. Non-obvious markets become billion dollar markets because of billionaires. Just listen to how painful John Paul DeJoria's story about first taking Patron to market was. Nobody would take us. Nobody wanted the product. 
Everyone we ran across said, I've never tasted anything like this, but it's way too expensive. The average tequila in 1989 was uh, around $5 a bottle. The, I think the best one was $14 if you could find it. We had to sell ours for $37.95, way more than anybody else. They said no. I walked into Spago's restaurant. Wolfgang Puck was a friend of mine, and Spago's was the restaurant in Beverly Hills to go to. And I gave him, say, so oh, JP, this is good stuff. I said, would you serve it to your celebrity friends? He said, of course, it's the best because they were known as the best of the best. When most entrepreneurs are faced with that kind of rejection, they stop. But John did what most billionaires do and kept going. Sure, some of the efforts led him back to the same dead end of market rejection, but he kept going and going and going and going all the way until he finally cracked the market, established the genre of high-end tequila and cashed out with a over $3 billion paycheck. Listen to the man himself tell you how to act with the same resilience. This one product that was too expensive that nobody wanted, and they were they had right that all the statistical data is no one could ever approach that, right? But all of a sudden it took on and people wanted to treat themselves to the very, very best. When I sold Patron about five years ago, we were approaching four million cases a year. And obviously, as you probably know, it's public record. It went for the largest amount ever with any uh, spirits company. But you know, so you, you don't believe what people tell you. You believe yourself. If someone tells you something that's real, there's no reason not to believe them. But if they tell you something negative, question it. What do you feel in your own heart? What do you feel can be done? And just go for it. I love John Paul DeJore. Let me just shout out that right there. The belief you have in yourself needs to have a higher standard than the belief you place in other people or your road to a billion won't likely ever reach 10 figure territory. Non-obvious markets have the most potential for growth and risk and obvious markets are now obvious because they are highly saturated and competitive. For example, everyone is talking about and flooding the AI market with new innovations and iterations of how to apply this new tech to consumer interfaces. But if you actually look back at market leaders like OpenAI, it was founded back in 2015 when AI was just a whisper and far from the billion dollar pot at the end of the rainbow that it is today. Now the same goes for crypto, real estate, Shopify, creator economy, and any other trendy industries buzzing with new entrepreneurs. So if you're looking at the market leaders in each of those categories, their roots go back decades before they were even considered a huge opportunity. Now, when I launched AppSumo.com in 2010, there was literally just 10 software companies for us to promote. At, at the time, people literally discouraged me saying, there's no way there's gonna be enough software deals for entrepreneurs for you to keep going. 15 years later, here we are, and we're making hundreds of millions of dollars for our partners, myself, the team, billionaires create their market. The third lesson these billionaires revealed to me was they are okay being boring. Yes, billionaires are boring and they know it. Now, this may sound like an insult because when I was, we were putting this together, I was like, oh, I'm kind of making fun of these people I really admire and it's so cool what they've done. Now, if I were to ask you to visualize, close your eyes, but keep watching. What an encounter with a billionaire would look like. Where would it be? What would they be wearing? How would they be speaking? You're probably imagining yourself off the coast of Monaco, super yacht, say Bezos is flying fox, he's got hair again. No, he doesn't, neither do I. Talking about the future of Amazon, his $1.7 trillion company. The image in your head does not match the Miller High Life beer hoodie and the shorts of James from our private jet interview, the energy billionaire, the short socks and sneakers of Paul Orphelia, or even the casual dress slacks of Michael Hudner. These billionaires defy the stereotypes with their simplicity and understated appearance, demeanor, and lifestyles. These men are in the same point 0000399 as Bezos, Oprah, Musk, Branson, and all the other infamous billionaires with mega yachts, islands, and spaceships. But the reality is the majority of billionaires live surprisingly simple and aesthetically un extreme lives. Larry Janeski, who built a billion dollar basement construction company, played his motivational tapes for me in a $40,000 Chevy Impala. James, the private jet interview. He made billions trading in energy commodities, pulled up in a humble BMW, it's humble, it's not a McLaren, although we were going on his multi, multi-million dollar private jet. Michael Hudner, who's done billions of dollars in shipping inventory, he dressed like a really good looking store manager. These billionaires I've spoken to are some of the most humbly boring people I have ever met. You pair that with their enormous net worth and it really made me reconsider what the effects of wealth and money should be on the human being. It's not just the clothes either, it's their actual businesses too. They aren't just in the sexy businesses of tech, real estate, finance, or faking it on social media. The billionaires I was lucky enough to interview or work for are breaking the mold by thriving in industries that many would consider well, 
boring. From basement construction to shipping inventory, they're proving that you don't need to be in Silicon Valley or Wall Street to rake in the big bucks or even in America. One of the most interesting billionaires I've talked to is Larry Janeski. He is a true blue collar billionaire. That's what his words, not mine. Building an empire around the basement construction repair and improvement business. Larry even made a compelling case when he stated, people that did well before then, okay? So tech isn't the only way to make money, okay? You know, you go to the store, you buy groceries, you go to a mall and you have all this retail. But you know, the cool thing is about work working with your hands is that you can never be replaced by AI. Amazon's not gonna take over. Your job is not gonna be offshored to India or anywhere else, right? Nobody can go in to a, a homeowner and fix their basement you know, from Amazon or from India or no robot is ever gonna fix a crawl space. Damn, this this really hit me when he said it because I grew up on Silicon Valley. I worked directly for Zuckerberg. You know, I helped run AppSumo.com. What I've seen through Larry Janeski has said, as well as through this YouTube channel, is that there's so many ways of getting rich. And I love that he is showing that thing about things that no one else is really competitive. in. There's a lot of competition in this tech world and YouTube and creation stuff, but it's really hard to be replaced. And there's a lot of opportunity with the hands on stuff. Billionaires like Larry, James, Michael and Paul have come to the realization that money is by no means the goal, but rather the tool they are most skilled at using to build the life they now lead. They act and spend with a clear sense of intention, rarely compromising what they want for what they think people want them to have or look like or own or anything. They are true to themselves more so than most entrepreneurs these days. And I think it's because the journey to 10 figures in net worth is anything but superficial. And they have learned more along their way to billionaire status about themselves than anything else. The fourth lesson from these 10 figures titans is that billionaires attitude towards money never changes the way billionaires treat money is instinctual it is not part of a strategy it's part of their personality which is why even though billionaires have more money than you and me can imagine concept of overpaying and frugality still exists this is not because they want to save money. It's because more than anyone on the scale of wealth, they respect and understand money to an extreme depth. Here's straight from the mouth of a billionaire who led us on his private jet. With money comes great responsibility, or you could just do whatever the hell you want. Many of us assume people with billions come from the freedom to do whatever the hell they want, but it's quite the opposite in many cases. The sheer amount of power that a billion dollar comes with, let alone two, three, four billions, is amazingly earth shaking. And because they're aware of the responsibility that comes with so much wealth, they are forever aware when something is overpriced and get pissed off when they're asked to overpay. Man, there's sometimes I buy something and they charge you a price that's so extreme and outrageous. You're like, it's insulting. It's like somebody slapped you across the face. The superpower of a billionaire is their fluency in the language of money. They know what it is and what its purpose is more profoundly than any of us. And for that reason, they will not overpay for anything. Clothes, cars, planes, or even steak. I go to a restaurant now, I get a steak. Every single steak is now 60 bucks now. It better be a damn good steak for 60 bucks. Because in my opinion, people don't make steaks very good anymore. If a $60 steak is overpriced for a billionaire, what are we doing? Even for myself. Last week, I got eight photos at Walgreens. It was $80. I was like, no way. I'm going to buy a printer and do it at home. The point being is being mindful of the money and it is very hard for them to earn it. And you can treat it just the same. Recently, someone asked me for why I don't fly private everywhere. Well, in first class, I can literally fly to the same place for $20,000 less. And like a billionaire's brain, I don't just see $20,000. I see 20,000 moments of the work and the sweat and the frustration and the happiness and the challenges that help me earn every single fucking dollar. And it's that mindset I carry with me no matter how high my own net worth reaches. And going a level deeper on this, the concept of overpaying applies to the way billionaires connect their time and happiness to money. James from the private jet, he was really clear about this when he talked about turning down $100,000 from the military to re-sign. So I realized very quickly that was the value of my happiness. They would have offered me a hundred thousand dollar reenlistment bonus to stay in. It wasn't worth my happiness. When I realized that I put a value on my happiness and it had a dollar number, I was like, okay, that's the number. What James is really saying and what I heard there, and that's exciting to me, is how do we start betting on ourselves? So about what we're worth, it's about us deciding what we're worth and taking action around that. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting out, or if you're a millionaire or a billionaire, it's that how do I keep betting on myself and betting on myself and betting on myself and feeling confident in the actions that I'm doing 
by the way, getting fired, I've been fired twice and it was empowering to realize, all right, I have to make my own decisions. I have to be responsible for myself. I have to start betting on myself. I'm getting fired from Excel Energy because I, I demanded that I be paid what I was worth. I demanded I actually get paid for doing somebody else's job, which I was doing. I was doing the job of three people. And I wanted to get paid maybe 5% more. So I was fired for that. And that gave me the initiative and the drive to be like, I'm going to show these people how this is done. Wow. What he's saying is like, how do we figure out to know what we are worth, right? If you think about a job, a lot of times you're saying, I'm giving up my life for this amount of money. And is it worth it? So as you start doing more things, as you get a little older, as you get a little more success under your belt, you will start thinking about how do I decide what I'm actually worth so that I can start saying no to more things and focus on the things that I feel worthy about. The reality is that billionaires like James can see straight through the inflated prices and unnecessary markups, yet people with a fraction of their big B net worth consistently pay double or triple what fiscal logic says it's worth. Billionaires need to respect money. They need to protect money and they will do it at all levels, whether it is buying an entire company or ordering a steak. They value $1 just as much as $999 million. They've made millions and billions so they can use it, not to lose it. The mindset and attitude of billionaires towards money, it never changes. And the fifth lesson I learned, billionaires make 10 figures doing just one thing. Larry Janeski, Just Basements. They do over $600 million a year in revenue. Well, that's amazing. John Paul DeJoria, Just Hair Care. He's got over a $3 billion net worth. Michael Hudner, who we've been talking about, Just Ships. And he's done over a billion dollars in shipping transactions. Paul Orphilia, who we've had on the show, Just Kinko's, $2.4 billion company sale. Mark Zuckerberg, who I've worked for. He's worth $150 billion. Just, he came up with Facebook and he even copied it. Now, what do all these people have in common? It's not luck, it's not chance, it's one thing. They literally do one thing. Billionaires are not jack of all trades, me amigos. They're masters of one. So why are we all doing it differently? And that goes against what a lot of aspiring billionaires try to do when they first start out in their business. We've been taught, we've been tricked maybe, to diversify, to spread ourselves strategically across various ventures. Invest here, invest here. But let me tell you, the real magic happens when you go all in on that one thing that's working. And here's the catch. Making that one thing equal 10 figures is not a sprint. This is where the sexiness happens. We always fixate on these billionaires that did get rich, but not how long they were at it. None of these titans of industry achieved billionaire status overnight. Not one. It literally took decades of dedication. So for yourself, when you've gotten started, give yourself props, give yourself love that you are sticking with these things over very long periods of time. Time is the ultimate currency on the road to billions. Time and success compounds directly and exponentially. You can't microwave your way to billions, even though you all know I love using the microwave. This isn't instant noodle success story, even though the guy who created Sriracha might be a billionaire. The reality is it is hard to fail at something when you dedicate five plus years, not to even mention 10 to 20 years of dedication to your craft. But now you have the first lesson to get you closer to solving the billionaire equation. One thing equals 10 figures. The sixth and final lesson from billionaires to me to you is that billionaires, they pay the price. There is a price to be paid if you want this level of wealth, straight up, and billionaires have paid in full. They have told me how deep that cost can cut. When I snuck on a James private jet to ask him about his journey to billionaire status, he opened up about what he sacrificed to do. I guess what I was wondering for you, do you ever regret working so much? Like, was it worth it? Like all the work and every all the sacrifice? It placed a heavy toll on my family life. And whenever I, my, my first marriage fell apart, what I was left with is that I have three beautiful children. In my time my, with my family, it was the most important thing in the world to me. Way more important than anybody. After my, my divorce, I would have given everything away because I could always make money, but I can't give back time with people. You know? Damn. That is powerful. You can't get back the time, but you can always make more money. Since I was able to get on James's private jet, which was very generous of him, I've thought about that a lot, which is how are you present for the things that really matter in your life? And then if you look in your deathbed and if you look in the cemetery, how much are you thinking about your real estate or your crypto portfolio or your income? You're, you're more thinking about your family, your friends, who you are as a person. And I love that he was able to share that for us now while we're alive so we can start being mindful of, yes, it's good to make money. Yes, it's good to be aggressive. Yes, it's good to go after what you want, but also not sacrificing everything along the way because just to keep chasing forever, you know, I don't think you'll ever find satisfaction. I don't think you'll ever find contentment. And so at different points, yes, it's good to go after the money, but being mindful to take a step back and say, hey, what's really important right now? And am I having the balance that I actually want? And will I regret it? Now, I think it's easy for us to idolize these life of billionaires because all we can see from the outside 
that is everything, the planes, the cars, the yachts, the girls, the traveling, the items, the things. But we forget that these ultra successful and wealthy people are still made from the same flesh. They use a toilet just like you and me do. Probably really nice ones, but they're still using it. Now I'm super thankful for people like James who've opened up about what he sacrificed on his way to wealth because it just shows that nothing comes without a cost and every cost is usually in proportion to its reward. And a billion dollars is no small reward. Michael Hudner, the shipping magnate, also opened up about the loss of his son on his road to wealth. That's why I made my comments about the money culture, especially for kids. I mean, it's tough on them. I mean, I see the kids today, they all think they should have what their parents have, and their parents might have spent a generation working for it. And that's not true of everybody. Some people are born with it. That wasn't my case. It's important to, to live a full life and a good life, and it's its own reward. And I think that um, I'm not naive about it. I said when we spoke the first time, I said, you know, it's, everybody, it's, it's nice to have some money in your pocket. I get that totally. I totally, totally get that. But you, but you can't destroy yourself for it. <sighs> you know, in your 20s and you, you want to have money, I don't want to say, hey, don't go hard. Don't go after it because that, that's what I did. Like, it was a very tough, challenging time. And now as I'm moving in my 40s, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that I was I worked my ass off to try to find out who I am, who I could become, try to get these businesses working. And now I'm, I am enjoying all that that momentum and things that I put in in my 20s. I like one of the lines you said. It's that, you know, they think they should have what their parents have, but their parents spent a generation working. And that's very true. It's not worth destroying yourself for. Entrepreneurship is not just about how to get rich. Entrepreneurship is about how do you create your own dream life. Life. And the coolest part about it, which I think is amazing, is it's not this hustle culture. Yes, work all the time and sacrifice your family, sacrifice all your things that matter outside of work. It's about finding the right path for you. At the end of the day, billionaires bleed just like you and me. And if you let the price tag on your life be your net worth, it is going to be a painful ride to billionaire status. And if I'm being completely honest, I don't have any interest in paying that price. I don't think the sacrifice required is worth it. To me, the question is why sacrifice more? If you can have an amazing life for me, even as a multimillionaire, I get an awesome life. And the good news is anyone can have this type of life just as well. If you apply all of these six billionaire lessons to your own life, there's no reason you and I won't sit across from each other one day in a future billionaire interview of mine. I look forward to that. The eligibility to become a billionaire is everyone, you included. We just have to pay the price. Every billionaire I interviewed in this video was a normal person before they came obsessed with a problem and possessed by their drive to sell a product or service that was a solution to a very big billion dollar, trillion dollar problem. And I'm not done learning from billionaires. As long as this channel exists, I'll open up the worlds and minds of the people who have cracked the code to entrepreneurship and unlocked enormous amounts of wealth. So if you wanna learn from the more billionaires, make sure to like, subscribe, and watch the full length interview of all the billionaires mentioned in this video, link below in the description. Uncle Noah loves you, and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.